हेलो गाइस दिस इज अधिर वेलकम टू माई चैनल मूवमेंट साइंस वेर आई सिंप्लीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स विद जो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसिडर सब्सक्राइबिंग बिकॉज आई सिंप्लीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स ओवर हियर एंड ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट ऑर्थो टॉपिक्स एंड लॉट ऑफ क्लिनिकल एप्लीकेशन विच यू कैन यूज इन योर डेली प्रैक्टिस ऑल्सो चेक मी आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वेर आई पोस्ट डेली एमसीक्यूज एंड ऑल्सो पिक्चर ऑफ माई नोट्स The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video we are going to talk about the structures that influence the stability of the patella that are the transverse and the longitudinal structure. then we will also talk about the q angle and the factors that influence the q angle and then finally we will discuss the exercises for the instability of the knee joint so when we talk about stability patella is very instable in extension position and to give the stability to patella there are two types of structures that are present on the anterior aspect of our knee joint that is the longitudinal and the transverse structures longitudinal structures are basically present in the longitudinal direction whereas the transverse are on the side so the first longitudinal structure that provides the stability is the patella tendon if you see it on the joe it is the patella tendon that is vertical then the second one is the quadriceps tendon over here so quadriceps tendon this is if this is the patella over here there will be the quadriceps tendon which is also vertical and then the patello tibial ligament that is the ligament that connects the patella to the tibia over here which is also comparatively vertical these structures create compressive forces on the knee joint let us see how so if all these structures are linked together by the patella they look somewhat like this right so if you look at these structures from the side view this are the quadriceps tendon and the uh, patella tendon and when your knee goes for flexion these create compressive forces in your knee joint right so that's how they provide the stability to your patella now going to the transverse structures there is the vastus medialis on the medial side over here that is called as a tear drop and the vastus lateralis on the lateral side over here right so vastus lateralis and vastus medialis and also the patello femoral ligament that connects the patella to the femur bone patella to the femur bone on both medial and lateral side on the medial side it is attached to the adductor tubercle and it provides 60% of the stability to the patella this is very important 60% is a very big part of the stability that is provided to the patella whereas on the lateral side tfl is there over here on the lateral aspect of the knee joint which provides a lateral stability to the patella apart from this there is also the lateral lip of the femur which provides the stability the vastus medialis has two parts that is vastus medialis obliquus and vastus medialis lateralis that is vmo and vml vastus medialis obliquus has around 50 to 55 degree of pull on the patella on the medial aspect whereas vml has 15 to 80 18 degree so strengthening of vastus medialis through neuromuscular reeducation and electrical stimulation can provide lot of stability to the patella the instability is mainly seen in trochlear dysplasia that is failure in development of the tissue at the patellofemoral joint that is the patellar groove is very shallow and this causes the instability apart from this q angle also plays a major role in patellar stability let us go on to the q angle now what is q angle in simple words it is the angle that is formed between the two lines the first line is passing from the patella to the tibial tuberosity so this is the patella over here center of the patella to the tibial tuberosity if you draw a line this is the vertical line and the second line is the patella to the asis over here so that is the second line so if you draw two lines one passing from the patella to the tibial tuberosity 
and the second line is the patella to ASIS. It forms an angle of 10 to 15 degree, which is a normal angle, Q angle. So Q angle is mostly measured in extension. And there are two reasons why it is measured in extension of the knee joint. That is, it is because with flexion, the tibia moves medially. During extension, the tibia is slightly on the lateral side like this. And as it goes for flexion, it will go on the medial aspect. So I talked about this in one of my previous videos. You can go and check it. That is the tibiofemoral kinematics. And the second reason is patella goes into the intercondylar notch. That is the groove of the patella. And this makes it hard to measure Q angle accurately. That's why it is mostly measured in extension. As Q angle increases, the lateral forces on the patella will also increase. In women, the Q angle is higher. Why? Because women have a wider pelvis. The pelvis will be wider. So this line over here will be even more further away from the normal or neutral. So this will increase the Q angle in women. So that increases the chances of patellar instability in women. If the patella shifts laterally, that is, this is the patella over here. If it shifts laterally, what will happen is Q angle will reduce. Why? Let us see. So if the patella is over here, if it shifts laterally, the angle that is formed will be somewhat like this. This will be the first line that is passing from the tibia to the patella, right? Which is shifted laterally will be somewhere over here. And then the second line that is passing from the patella to the ASIS will also shift somewhat like this. So this will be the angle. So this will be the angle. And the Q angle will be reduced as patella shifts laterally. Hence Q angle is not the best way to measure patellar instability. Now there are certain factors that affect the patellar position which in turn affects the Q angle. Let us see what are those factors. So the first factor is the valgus. If there is knee valgus, that is excessive knee valgus, Q angle will increase. How? The tibia will go like this. So the first line will be over here and the second line will be over here. So you can see the Q angle is increased. Whereas in varus, what will happen is the tibia will go like this and this line will stay like this. So the Q angle will be reduced in varus. In medial femoral torsion, the femur will rotate medially whereas in lateral tibial torsion the tibia will rotate laterally this will also increase the q angle whereas in pronation of ankle that is if the ankle joint goes for pronation that is the collapse of the medial arch over here on the medial side the valgus will again increase and it will cause increase in the q angle other things that can lead to increase in Q angle is laxity of the medial retinaculum. Over here is the medial retinaculum. If this retinaculum becomes very lax and the shortening of the lateral retinaculum that is on the lateral side, on the lateral side, if the retinaculum becomes shortened or tight, it can also cause increased Q angle. And finally, the IT band that is if IT band becomes taut, it can pull the patella laterally and can also affect the Q angle. So now we know that what is Q angle and what are the factors that affect the Q angle. Let us see what are the exercises that we can give in case of patellar instability. During patellar instability, exercises that can be given are mini squats till 90 degree and open kinematic knee extension with no terminal extension. Now this I've explained in my previous videos of knee kinetics. You can go and check that out where I have talked about this in detail but I'll still explain over here during mini squats till 90 degree over here you can see the angle is still 90 degree over here the knee is making 90 degree till 90 degree the moment arm will be larger so quadriceps will be working pretty hard but at the same time you should not go below this range because the area of contact of patella with the femur will be very less hence it can increase the patellofemoral stress which i covered in my last video you can go and check that out and also in open kinematic chain exercises that is over here this is the open kinematic closed is when the foot is in contact with the ground and open is when foot is not in contact with the ground 
So in open kinematic chain exercises, you can give them knee extension exercises from here till here. But you should not give terminal extension because the moment arm is very high. So the patellofemoral stress that is created will be also very high. So you can give extension that is knee extension exercises in open kinematic chain but not terminal extension. So to summarize we talked about the longitudinal and transverse structures that cause the stability of the knee joint. Then we went to the Q angle and what are the factors that affect the Q angle and finally we talked about the exercises that can be given for a person with patellofemoral instability without increasing the stress in the patellofemoral joint. Thank you for watching. If you like my content please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. Thank you for watching.